Hi everyone. Good to see you on my channel today. Today I will tell you a wonderful story. It is full of love and kindness. I hope you enjoy it and I wish you an enjoyable viewing experience. Thank you. And modestly dressed young woman wanders among the old merchant buildings. Old jeans, an unremarkable sweatshirt, not flashy sneakers, gathered in a ponytail bright red hair, clearly long ago has not known professional styling, from under thick stockings on the surrounding world. Green eyes with golden dots on the pupils occasionally peek out, stunningly beautiful, but somehow joyless. She is irresistibly good looking like some ancient Greek backhand, created to drink wine and make merry, a jeweler would say. Like an emerald, skillfully framed by the fiery luster of gold, but hiding its charms for a while. But she doesn't want to drink wine and praise Dionysus. She wants the peace of silence, the freedom. Behind her back two hours ago, the gates of the women's colony on Kolominskaya Street in Nizhny Novgorod closed. There is still three hours of time before the train home to the south. Why not see the city she had seen only a few times and from afar? Yes, she had heard its noise as she traveled from institution to institution. At the beginning of a long pedestrian boulevard with a mass of funny sculptures, the redhead stops by a souvenir store to buy the famous Gorodets gingerbread for souvenirs. Though who is going to take a present? She has no intention to meet her mother after her betrayal. And she has no one else in this world. Somehow unexpectedly, Wickley under sad thoughts a pretty street with artists, a crowd of inquisitive tourists, a collection of stores, almost ends near the transition to the Kremlin complex. A woman looks into a butcher store with local specialties. Mother of God, I was going to lead the world of total deficit, and here the counters are bursting with abundance. The stranger is talking to herself. Greedily buys an appetizing ring, glossy smoked sausage, a fresh loaf, can't resist adding a jar of instant coffee, a pack of her favorite oatmeal cookies to her stock of provisions, adds a little to the tasty trophy, a flat bottle of cognac. Did she have something to celebrate tonight? At least she was indifferent to booze. There would have to be something to enjoy on the train. More than 24 hours away, she continued her mental monologue, yet used to the realities of free life, new conditions, the clean air of that loneliness, when everything around ceases to be common. A dormitory barracks with bunks, rows of showers in the bath, basins for washing laundry, a workshop for sewing men's underwear, a la family. The woman smiled, remembering that her name, Anna, translated as laundry basin. Having loaded with chortles, she goes for a walk on the territory of the Kremlin's possessions, takes a long look at the exposition of military equipment at the entrance, leisurely stumps along the alleys for love with bright berries from ripe rowan berries. Golden autumn, it rules its colorful, costume ball. The foliage of all shades of yellow, green, and Bordeaux is still pretty firmly on the trees and shrubs. But the Missouri is frowning its autumnal frown, rolling gloody gray waters, bringing boats up and down. There's even two luxury cruise ships moored there. You can't see the name from afar. But for some reason Anna is firmly convinced that the ships are cruise ships. At the zone they recently showed them a movie in honor of the holiday of some townsmen and the arrival of the commission. Titanic. There was a rich crowd walking the decks. They ate their food in the restaurant, shining in the light of artificial lamps with snow-white dishes. Demonstrated to each other expensive outfits, jewelry, aristocratic gloss, everything on display, everything in the highest order. Maybe that's why God drowned this uncaring bunch in the icy seawater. That's how the poor seem to love America, promising everyone the fulfillment of their most cherished dreams. Where does justice lie in this world? You'd be hard-pressed to find it. Anna often spent her time in the zone reading books. Thanks to the library was noble. She chose novels of English and French classics. She didn't complain. She had more than enough trouble of her own. Plunge briefly into someone else's tales became easier. Longing behind the glitter of book tinsel hid. I was naive or dreamy. She saw herself in the future also the author of sentimental novels, love lyrics. How many women's fates passed her by in the zone? How many stories for a lifetime cannot tell on paper? and the words will not pick up the right, but where literary craft is taught, she did not know. No, she wasn't an illiterate ignoramus. She had finished school without a C before she went to jail, but then everything went wrong. The woman was distracted from not cheerful thoughts by an ugly scene. A noisy flock of young people fell out of the bus. The group was either going on a tour of the Volga city 
or had already returned from it. One healthy handsome guy was dragged out of the bus almost in his arms. At first she even thought that he was ill, whether a good looking, obviously richly dressed major was drunk, and the comrades did not know what could be effectively done about it. Not finding a more productive solution, laid the guy on a bench next to Anna sitting on it. Don't even think of interfering ordered herself the ex-convict. All you need is trouble, I hadn't gotten home yet. And my heart ached and whimpered for the stupid inexperienced boy. About 20 meters away from this bench sat two elderly people who looked like independent tourists, exploring Denver meticulously, with feeling, with purpose. They were heatedly discussing their impressions of the Kremlin and its architectural beauties in the nearby streets. The woman carefully handed her companion a bottle of water and a piece of chocolate bar, just broken off a bar in a rustling package. Probably husband and wife. It's obvious that they understood each other half-heartedly for a long time. They wouldn't be chased away. Cautious, Anna thought. But her tongue was already working ahead of her. The boy is not well there. She ran up to the resting couple. Could you call an ambulance? And you yourself that you do not dare. The old man smiled slyly. Maybe the youth and without us will cope. And then we have to deal with the false call. We are not from around here. I'm not from here either, Anna explained. I have a train in an hour. I was just about to catch a cab to go to the train station. All together they turned to the bench, on which the guys had laid the poor man, who knew no measure in his outpourings. The victim was restless, waving his arms. He kept falling off the bed. The guy was already so bad that the guys moved him to the ground, putting down their jackets. They themselves were shivering, squirming in the far from timid autumn chill. You've got it, you restless young lady, said an elderly tourist pressed the screen of the phone. With a clear voice he began to explain to the dispatcher, on the other end of the wire where he was, and what had happened. And Anna belatedly thought about the fact that she had not yet guessed to get a connection. Yes, and the device of cellular communication knew were completely unknown to her. You'll have to learn everything again in freedom. She beat out an attitude while she ran to catch a cab. But she was gestured down by a man helping with the ambulance. Don't leave me and my wife behind. I'll call you a cab back to the station here. Anna laughed unkindly to herself. Three hours out of the zone, and already managed to sign up as a witness. There's nothing to do. I made this mess and I have to clean it up. What a meticulous character. I can never get past it. If something's wrong. The ambulance arrived surprisingly quickly, and thank God. By that time, the unlucky Alki had already lost consciousness from intoxication. Doctors had to carry out resuscitation right on the bench, and then to Anna and her elderly helpers approached both the police and medical rescue workers. You promptly called us? Well done. We suspect that the guy has an individual intolerance. First time he tasted vodka, he had a seizure, could have gone to Quincy Edema. We got there in time. His life is in no danger now. Even called by a comrade in the Salvation Army cab did not save Anna from the fact that the train, in his car she sat almost on the run. The conductor was a pest. She studied the certificate of release like some ancient scientific treatise in an unknown language. She hummed unhappily, saying that there were not enough convicts in the car, but she nodded her head graciously at the place in the passenger car. Anna rode alone on the two side shelves. At the bottom, like a queen, she drank a hundred grams straight from the net for a sweet dream. She snacked happily on a smoked sausage sandwich. And then I brought myself boiling water, borrowed a faceted glass cup holder from the conductor, generously poured into it divinely smelling coffee in neat granules. She bought a sugar cane, tore open a packet of cookies. Divine, impossible, fabulous. Thought Anna fell under the clatter of the wagon wheels even after a large portion of coffee, into a blissful sleep. Her fate had been steep up to this day. What would the coming day hold in store for her? That sweet word, freedom. Thought Anna woke up in the morning in a train car. That seems to be the name of an old detective movie made in the 70s of the Soviet era, either by the Baltics or by Chicagoans with the Baltics. Some escaped prisoners, some chases and persecutions. It's strange, I remember the movie vaguely, but the winning phrase from it popped up at once, it's all that long-awaited freedom so influences me. The period of agonizing for me the decisions of the administration is all Kanayotsia. They'll release me on parole, detain me, remind me of all my sins. A young woman rolled such a pleasant word freedom in her mouth. She enjoyed it, this imaginary triumph, expressed by leaving the territory of the colony. A holiday, 
a new experience, a revelation. Who's gonna be a panka behind barbed wire? It's funny. It's a good thing I'm going home to New York, not lurking, having every right to do so. My eight years in the penitentiary is no joke, a horrible dream, hell, and hard labor. She watched this picture much later, and she was born with the USR, which seemed to be a strong monolith, collapsed like a house of cards. Little Anna was born in 1995, when the notorious union had already been gone for more than four years. The parents lost their jobs, survived on casual earnings, quarreled among themselves almost to the point of a fight, and then sweetly made peace. Here at the conclusion of such another piece, she and appeared in the womb in the project, not in time, oh how not in time. After realizing that knocked up, her mother was angry at the world, shouted at her husband, a more who did not like to protect himself, blamed herself for lack of restraint in dangerous days. What was the use? Pregnancy was rarely easy and carefree. Only the belly after the fifth month began to round up. Otherwise, no toxicosis, no health problems. My father was offered a job on a rotational basis in the northern latitudes. Easygoing and Gore packed a backpack. He was the only one they saw. His wife, always irritated, blushy, fat, had been pissing him off for a long time. And now he had such an excuse. He settled down in the north like a native. He enjoyed the abundance of fluffy white snow, invigorating frost wooden log cabins right in the middle of the harsh tago with a rudimentary set of amenities. He had a strange feeling of a caveman who had been kept in captivity until now and then released into the open. In his small homeland of seaside New York, he had never seen such winter bounty. He prayed for a man's physical work in logging, for which the pay was kingly by the standards of the 90s. He quickly found himself a fighting, hearty girlfriend for lovemaking. He was a prominent man, even among the same sometimes handsome stout men, distinguished by his breed, article, and grace. A telegram with the text, do not wait for me, I will not return. Here now is my home and my happiness. A stutchel spouse in six months, and then disappeared from the horizon of his wife and already born by that time Anna. The divorce was formalized in absentia. He made it clear that the alimony is not worth counting on. All the more to complain to the authorities and search for him. It'll be worse if his first family goes to the wrong place. Another woman might have rushed to appeal and get her husband back. Mother Anna went to the other extreme, began to change suitors like gloves. All in an attempt to prove to herself and her ex-husband that she is not a piece of cake. See how the male sex is in demand. The girl grew up as a tumbleweed from staying in kindergarten from Monday to Friday in the school after school program. Her mother was looking for her ex-husband's features in her, and she had green eyes too. Jacob's hair was a light red head, but this one was painted like shining copper. Her figure was feminine beyond her years, as if she had not been born as a little girl, but Aphrodite out of the foam of the sea. Mother Anna compared herself and the growing little girl in the mirror. She didn't like what she saw. Therefore, in the rare hours when her daughter was at home, and not in another children's institution, spanked her for no reason. It would have continued to continue and further, but the absent-minded mom fell in love. Yes, so that the light around without a hearty friend now did not see, there is no it near does not breathe, he does not sleep lazily on the sofa, at the window freezes in anticipation. At that time Anna was 14 years old, the girl had blossomed so that you could paint pictures of her, and her mother is more and more eager to send her away somewhere out of sight, so that the new boyfriend won't be interested in the young one. It didn't work. When the beau first saw Anna, froze in admiration, but was not a fool to show his interest in the underage girl. A young pretty girl walks through the room with an apple or a book. He'd be blown away with desire. She's just a little snot. It's not far from trouble. He chose a clever, secret tactic to win the girl. Books with her began to discuss, which also read and continue to study in large quantities, in chemistry and physics pulled up. Anna was drawn more and more to literature and history, to the movies, and ice cream cafes he took her to while his common law wife was on shift. Mother Anna at that time already three years as a conductor on intercity trains worked. He did not give himself away with a look, gestures, or a touch. On the contrary, he kept somewhat aloof, like a cunning fox in ambush, knowing that his patience will be rewarded a hundredfold. On her 15th birthday, Anna gave her a small bottle of real French perfume and a new dress. We should treat our daughter, we're family. He explained his generous impulse life partner. 
At times it began to seem to him that the hunt for the attention of even more beautiful young lady has become for him a game, the purpose of life. If Anna knew what thoughts and desires caused his appearance, a warm smile in the head of his stepfather would have fled the house without looking back. But the girl was naively careless about nothing, was childishly Sabrina and a classmate who sat with her at the same desk. Reveled in the works of Alexander Dumas, Swade Dreiser, was a little out of this world. Her peers ran to the school wasteland to smoke. They pass a bottle of wine around, and then they play the bottle game. She take out another classic masterpiece from her backpack and disappear into dreams and reveries about a prince. Fashionable things in her closet, her mother did not spoil her, her mother did not let her near her cosmetics. Anna dressed gray and dull. Only bright appearance did not allow her to become a laughingstock. Good-natured, easy character. It's the 21st century. All around only talk about cell phones, their gadgets dream of getting from their parents. Anna had no idea about the existence of technology, which can be controlled by pressing fingers. She downed a button version of Nokia with a minimal set of functions, believing that this miracle, forgotten to the rich passengers in the mother's car, is the last masterpiece of electronic technology. There are so many other interesting things around in her beloved sunny New York City. The blue early warming still in spring and the long defending sea in the fall velvet dunes, the gentle sand hugging Charlotte, the village suburb of the children's resort where their small private house stood, cherry trees in the garden in early summer with large maroon fruits, yellow orange apricots in July red green juicy apples in September. All these southern luxuries the girl in the summer beach season helped her mother to trade, for the vegetable garden both had neither strength, nor desire, nor time. So a couple of beds of greens for their table, fruit-bearing trees curtsies with a plow did not require perfectly helped with an extra penny in the family budget. Fruit merchants did not go to the market. They gave their crops to resellers and let them do what they wanted with them. Anna clutched her eyes sweetly. She realized she was as hungry as a wolf. No, she hadn't been a wolf for a long time. The rest of the sausage and the loaf were eaten in five minutes. Then she had coffee and cookies. A couple of them she gave to a quick boy, who was always spinning in the aisle of the car. She thought, look how his mother is fiddling with him. She took out a drawing set and handed him a big white pier, and then she smoothed the hairs on his frizzy head. Why was everything wrong with my childhood? Why did I deserve such indifference of my mother? The girl's stepfather, by the way, was absolutely indifferent to all the girls and girls falling into his eyes. Only Anna awakened in him instincts and desire to be a pioneer to teach her everything. At 16, he still hadn't touched her, having paid for a birthday trip to New York with the class that her parents had been offered at school. Before her senior year, Anna came back from the trip so enthusiastic. Palaces, temples, sculptures, bridges, bodies of water, park landscape masterpieces. In her pretty head a new and already more tangible dream was born. She should connect her destiny with the literary field. To be close to such marvelous art as the whole of North Pond Europe. After digging through online academic directories, she chose the Literary Institute of Chicago, in Vegas, alas, there was no specialized university in my chosen profession. In the study in the 11th grade plunged headlong. Her stepfather gave her every encouragement in all endeavors. Even convinced her mother to send Anna to the capital to study. My aunt lives there. A lonely woman, at first shelter, there will be seen. Commercial department will not pull, but the budget let her dare, if she gets the right number of points. The girl's mother didn't object. She was concerned about the presence in the house suddenly very mature daughter. It was already obvious that the fruit of their love affair with the cheating Jacob was fire. Okay, slender figure, long, slender legs, a thick wave of waist-length auburn red hair. If you let them loose, the blush all over her cheeks, the emerald green of her lustrous and lively eyes, a lady of perfection, there's no other way to call such a work of mother nature. Behind the boys with silly giggles does not run, next to almost indifferently sits with textbooks from morning to night, missing all the youth parties in the village. Lelouch how many young people with a claim to cavaliers. Circles around their small house slice silent and a heart. Nobody liked from the word at all. A gift, not a child. No worries for mother white crow and a flock of peers not spoiled, almost turgeon of sky young lady, romantic, sentimental, kind, soulful, dreaming of pure real necessarily mutual love. So far, there is no suitable object in the immediate environment. She will, as she sometimes joked, 
study, study, and study. She did not realize that she had a very well-read and enlightened child. She didn't have the time to dig into it and figure it out. How would her daughter live in Chicago? The mother didn't give it a second thought. I'd like to get this rival out of her husband's sight as soon as possible. Life would be easier, life would be more fun. Stepfather still enthusiastically delved into all the literary experiments stepdaughter, devouring her eyes and more frankly, a couple of times unintentionally in an argument, put his hand on her knee. When he saw the astonishment in her gaze, he immediately retreated cowardly. Anna, although she was a little different from her friend's classmate's desire for the moon, something now began to plague her in the views of the second daddy, viciously criminal, but she tried to reject such thoughts until the final test of those most notorious, turning the exams upside down. There wasn't much time left. How many points can I get? That was the only thing Anna was thinking about right now. She didn't care about her stepfather's stares. Maybe it's all just my imagination. The circumstances of admission to the capital's university were most favorable. The number of points received after passing was solid, and stepfather's aunt turned out to be the widow of a former party functionary from the top. With the right connections, intelligent old lady met Anna as a native person. Educated, savvy, wise woman prompted the girl how to behave in the admission committee. What other documents to add to create the image of a suitable applicant for this institute? In parallel with the enrollment, Anna avidly familiarized herself with Chicago. A trip to the Museum Reserve Arkhangelskoy, walks on the old Arbat, two trips with her aunt in the famous theaters of the capital. For more, alas, there was not enough time. I saw my name on the list of the lucky students accepted to the first course. She chose the specialty of literary worker, translator of fiction. She really wanted to learn several foreign languages as well. She didn't go home. She flew on the wings of victory. New York met her with the summer heat of summer vacationers idly walking around the village, smells of ripe watermelons and melons, a quick bite to eat. Mother was on a trip, and stepfather at work rushed to the sea. Long walked on the soft sand shallow water. Then she threw herself into the aquamarine water with puppyish delight. She wanted to shout to the sky and the seagulls flying above her. I got in, yay. I'm going to Chicago soon to study. I'm starting a new life of success and happiness. I ran home in tears, my feet in the sand wouldn't even dry. So I wanted to share the news with loved ones soon. With a joyful squeal I rushed under the shower, washing off the traces of the sea presence and invasive omnipresent sand. I was so busy with my sensations that I didn't hear that the bathroom door opened silently and my stepfather came in. Hearing his words and realizing his intentions, Anna began to resist. Let me go. Are you crazy? What's the matter with you? Get out of here right now. The man didn't listen to her. After a few seconds, Anna quieted down. Her stepfather took her reaction as a sign of agreement. The girl, meanwhile, feverishly searched for a way out of this ugly situation. Also, mom is on a voyage. What will happen now? Anna all twitched with disgust. The stepfather she trusted so much had just betrayed her in the nastiest way imaginable. The girl's eyes searched the room around her, and then she saw the shaving machine her stepfather used lying on the edge of the sink. A haze in her eyes, a state of effect, hopelessness. Anna grabbed the razor and started stabbing him randomly with it, the cuts on her stepfather's face. A wild panther, a lynx, a predatory cougar, awoke in her. Taking advantage of her stepfather's confusion, jumped out of the old cast iron bathtub. Running into the room, the man, distraught with pain and frustration, rushed after her. The girl thrashed around the living room until she saw a massive crystal vase. She hadn't meant for him to die. It had all come out by accident. Throwing the glass stampede at her pursuer, she didn't calculate the force of the blow. There was so much hate in her right now, like some corny crime movie, flashing through her mind in a hot delirium. Her stepfather swung his arms in a ridiculous way, slipping in the puddle left by the wet Anna. For a couple more seconds, as if in slow motion ran forward, and then in his path appeared a vase thrown by the girl. The blow landed on her forehead and temple. Anna, sobbing, jumped up to the father lying on the floor, again grabbed the fallen vase, and delivered several more blows to the man's head. Later, the investigator said that she had not committed an act of self-defense. She didn't have the strength for a long time, not to defend herself, not to prove anything. Then, after everything that had happened, Anna sat on the floor next to the body and howled in her voice. Then she went to the city phone, 
dialed the number of the police and said deeply, Come here, stepfather is dead. At the trial, her mother testified against her. She was always hovering in front of my husband. He couldn't have made a move on her by himself. She just provoked him with her defiant behavior. There's only one man in this world who loved me properly. And that one, my dear little daughter, killed him. I don't want to know you anymore. Damn you. It didn't take long to solve Anna's case. Her victim's head was a mess. Not a scratch on her own. No help from the neighbor's stories about her being a well-behaved, well-behaved girl. Unflattering character references from school. The young criminal was given 10 years in a general security colony. She did not appeal to the higher courts. While the trial was going on, the documents were awaiting finalization. She turned 18. Now she couldn't even be a juvenile. The place of incarceration was Denver Women's Correctional Facility too. After eight years of exemplary work and behavior of the prisoner Anna was allowed to go free on parole. Now Anna went to her hometown, not knowing what awaits there. Her mother during her time in prison never once came with her for a visit, did not transfer a single parcel to the zone. Only after her arrest, she brought her things to the detention center and disappeared. For all those dark, hard years, it was getting dusk outside the train window. Anna again desperately wanted to eat. Here and a long stay in Miami came up. On the platform in a clean grocery kiosk, the girl bought two appetizing chebureks and two tender still warm kata puri with cheese. Coffee would do as a drink, she now had to save her earnings. Rent an apartment, settle down at the resort, get her passport again, try to find a job. On the sandy shore of New York, in the heart of the beach areas of Charla Village, sat a young man. He thought about the fact that soon the famous dunes would be completely lost from the barbaric raids of hoteliers, would disappear from the face of the earth. This was his way of distracting himself from his misgivings. He did not admit to himself that his heart was uneasy. For hours now, since last night, his twin brother hadn't returned his calls. Since childhood, he and Harvey had been evenly matched. Impressive height, well over 180 centimeters. The appearance of a tough warrior with a well-developed torso and musculature. Brown eyes with a twinkle, thick, luxuriant hair that any young lady would envy. Why did God gave us different views on the world around us as a mockery? Once again, Max asked himself. He himself is the soul of the company, the leader, the leader, the great cardinal of the fate of peers. Waving a finger, any beauty will go with him into the palace and in a hut under the bright southern stars. We'll be honored to accompany him at parties, parties as a queen with an invisible crown of the chosen one will sit in his black SUV and proudly gawk at the sides. Harvey is his brother, a half-brother, and from the same egg hatched as their mother likes to tease their mother, a bookworm, a fan of the computer of all these programs of technical coding inconceivable on the female sex zero attention. Once fell in love in high school in a neighbor in the house, followed her like an idiot, tied with a rope to the leg of the diva, and then her parents in Chicago moved Prasnitsa disappeared having cut off forever all shabby ties with the provincial Black Sea Resort. Harvey, meanwhile, was still missing, never showed up at home. Offline, the man shook off the sand from his jeans, went to the car parked in one of the Charlotte passages to the sea. Now I'm gonna stop by Harvey's apartment again and head to New York. There's a club happening tonight. I should at least take a shower and change. Taking the car off the alarm, once again looked around the neighborhood, saying to myself, it's good as it is now, it's quiet. High beach season is over. The natives are coming to their guest houses and hotels clean their feathers. Soon it will begin again repair, painting, renewal. Before you know it, the new summer season is inexorably approaching. Max had quite a strong construction business, several brigades, qualitatively engaged in the renovation of resort complexes. Activity in these fertile lands for citizens' rest is profitable, always in demand. That's why Max, unlike Harvey, was quite financially secure. Not that brother, then thick after the sale of another interesting program invented by him, then empty, as the money is thrown away on important hardware and other technical things. You got a hole in your pocket, Harvey, rumbled the younger brother. I was born 10 minutes late. Seems a lifetime older than you with your pragmatism. Calls to Harvey's apartment door yielded nothing. Max went to extreme measures, opened the door with his spare keys, which he used in rare, exceptional cases. His brother did not like strangers, even brotherly visits to his territory. An inspection of the room yielded nothing. The usual light clutter on the desk around the computer. 
a cup with the long cooled remnants of strong coffee, tangerine skins, a bite of liver. In the washing machine in the kitchen, clean laundry that had already had time to dry, a pan with half-eaten pieces of fried sausage, poured eggs, breadcrumbs, sliced rings and fresh cucumber in a plate on the table, gave the impression that his tidy brother, who usually kept the kitchen in perfect condition somewhere in a hurry. The question remained, where exactly? Max and Harvey had recently hit their thirties. Decision-making age, joked the chuckling mother. You brothers, rabbits already settled down, get married children to have children it's time, and you all one on the cheerful girls is not a miss. The other to the monitor will stick to Nia Lu, will not wait for us and my father grandchildren. We could have two grandchildren at once. My grandfather and I would walk along seaside alleys with four strollers at once. In our family, every generation, we have twins. It's a good thing. One birth and you're free. The Orla family was from the native New Yorkers, even their grandfathers, who used to meet guests of resorts on these lands. It used to be like that, the sea is clean, but only seaweed comes to the shore. On the shore, the sand of yellow sand mixed to the touch is invisible. How many generations grew up here, building intricate fortresses and castles out of sand by the sea? Around the city the fields are endless with variegated herbage of vine possessions, rare low scatterings of silent peaks, the very beginning of the great mountains. The climate for health is the healthiest. Aromas of steppe blossom with sea breeze mix, lungs to bronchitis from impurities, balneological resort. It's not a bullshit resort. This is status. To be treated and recuperated here in droves as they already in the early 20th century began. Clever aristocrats from among the subjects, their children back in the second half of the 19th century brought here. Here is a friendly family of eaglets, from generation to generation in every possible way contributed to the health of the population. Grandfathers, great-grandfathers before the Great Patriotic War, and after it fed visiting resort guests, fresh fruit, melons, watermelons, grapes. Garden bak choy, vineyard they have almost 20 acres occupied, post-war generations of sun raised a wonderful, soulful, and children's doctor's guy went. He studied in the big city at the university, returned to his small homeland. All his professional life, he works in children's sanatoriums and deals with orphans. The profile in their hospital was such, destitute and unaccompanied by their parents and fate abandoned to medical procedures to take, an experienced pediatrician is already 65 years old. So to a well-deserved vacation will not be chased away. Every morning again hurries to work, although that his first preventorium has long been closed, miraculously preserved in the institution after already reconstructed at the Children's Resort of Health Centers faithfully works. His wife Ariana, mother Harvey and Max, among the hustling nurses looked out, cheerful and carefree. In spite of all the troubles, she was pretty and very kind. She stayed that way, at first she couldn't get pregnant for a long time. Not only did they get married when they were both over 30, but their brothers were in no hurry to be born. But Ariana at 35, immediately as two from the chest identical from the face were drawn. They were the rare naughty ones, little Max the younger, Harvey the older. Were, they looked so much alike that except for Ariana and her husband, the whole neighborhood confused them with each other. In order that the kindergarten teacher did not faint from these hooligans, made to copy, Ariana was forced to dress them differently. So the boys adapted here too. They began to swap things, the size of one in the same, bringing more confusion in the heart of the educator. People say that there is a special, almost mystical connection between the two twins. At Harvey and Max this property was tenfold increased, one finger hurts, the other cries from pain and fear. The first one's milk tooth fell out, clock in for an hour and the second one will have a hole in his mouth to brag about, and fought for the truth, and cried and fell asleep under the howling songs of the mother, and loved kindergarten tiftelki with tomato gravy they equally. But the hobbies from childhood were different, it's amazing the metamorphosis. Harvey was obsessed with technology, read a lot of books as soon as he learned the letters for the first time. But at the same time he hated such a subject as math and worship literature. It's a paradox. Max knew all rock, pop, hard, country, and other bands by heart, he could guess tracks by the first notes. He danced like Maris Lipa, only without ballet steps. From the age of 14, he raced secretly in his father's car, thanks to his tall height. Classmates fell in love with himself by the packs, broke little girls' hearts in a casual way, without straining. 
Harvey was not interested in any other technology except for the electronic one in the computer. Stared at the fair sex and saw nothing. His heart was silent. His soul wasn't panting. I pranked once, but the posse left. I didn't conduct such experiments anymore. Sometimes he only relieved natural male tension in the company of another girl without complexes, from the numerous entourage of his brother. In one thing the brothers were united irrevocably in their love for sports. Both had passed the candidate minimum for a master in swimming. Both went to the boxing section, but Harvey still later abandoned. At school, the twins mocked the teachers as they wanted, if not scheduled control work, frontal surveys were pain coming. They came to class in different disguises. Both had short haircuts, brown eyes, but Harvey came to school in a strict classic suit with a turtleneck or shirt. The outfit was complemented by elegant men's shoes, a la a real gentleman, a hobo max shabby in jeans, sweatshirts, wearing hoodies a couple sizes larger, bright acidic and sneakers. T-shirts knowing their commitment to different styles, calmly accepted the annual control at one, replacing the other, changing clothes in the school restroom. Max was in charge of math, literature, Harvey, and so on. In his senior year, Harvey had to take math with a tutor. The sats are no laughing matter. You can't tease the board by changing masks. Max did his own math. He did his own math. They took up their studies stoically. So they got their high school diploma. It was uncomfortable for two such big foreheads to sit on their necks forever. They agreed on that point without debate. No one would have believed it before. But Harvey himself, without pulling up by the ears, went to Miami State University to study mathematics, mechanics, and computer science. Living, breathing, raving about computers. In order for his brother not to be bored in the southern capital, Max applied to Miami State University of Construction. In the student years, the twins had the same as everyone else. Live student Vesley from session to session, in sessions only twice a year. Diplomas received, almost without straining. On vacations they hurried to their native New York. They did not get out of the tender sea, sunbathed until blackness between the dunes on the hot sand, spreading blankets. We ate sunny fruits, savored fried mullet of fresh catch, cooked propana in a big cauldron on the fire. Max usually brought another hearty friend to visit his parents. Sometimes the companion took with her, in turn, another young lady for Harvey. Empty troubles, brother never once fell for it, which amused his parents, Max then had to entertain two Davis, the girlfriend of his girlfriend everywhere annoyingly dragged after him and the objects of his summer passion, not giving the young to be alone. Everything ended the same way. Max had run out of patience. He bought the girls' tickets home. He found the hottie for himself in New York. The years of almost carefree college life flew by like a blink. After graduation, the hopeful specialist in innovative it and Harvey was offered to stay at the department, but he fled home with Max. The two couldn't live apart. Quiet, peace-loving, New York was growing and developing by leaps and bounds, as mushrooms after the rain grew from under the ground modern fashionable hotels, from the number of cooler with stars on their epaulets. Former home estates were transformed into guest houses, middle-class bed and breakfast establishments appeared. Everyone who could find the means to do so was building them. Max, like a fish in water, plunged into the maelstrom. A year later he bought himself first an apartment and then a dark jeep. Not lazy in Harvey days and nights sat at the screen of a large monitor and corresponded with the sane webmasters about their archival things. Inventing, developing, selling, implementing. Started the whole process all over again. I earned a one-room apartment by myself. I knew how to drive a car. But he rarely used it. He passed the theoretical exams for his license with flying colors. Max took the driving test for him. Just in case, his brother was always in the clouds, he'd get lost near a sign and make a wrong turn, no matter what. As a result, Max took the car. If it was for something, he never bought his own. Ungrateful bastard. Max kept saying like an incantation in his brother's apartment, I'll kill you if you show up. The junk in the door, unheard, the key rattling in the lock. In the room, only the walker ticks. The sun by noon had already taken its place at the very zenith. Not a word from Parry. At the New York train station, the train arrived exactly on schedule. Anna stepped out onto the small platform, greedily breathed in the sweet grassy air, looked around. On the small platform at the station, there were rows of cars with checkers, local cab drivers. Their service is clean and tidy. 
to take the non-local taxi drivers to New York by the third road through Vidyatas on the blessed kilometers in Kalpex, the holy high season. Don't rip off your own people and don't offend them and give them a hearty welcome home. Where are you going, my dear? An eager young man rushed to her. I'll deliver you with the best way, Redhead. And immediately faltered when he saw the look of Anna's green eyes. After a forced stay in the guest at the cum girl looked differently. She was shivering and shivered to the bone from her cold. I see you're from our neighborhood. The cab driver corrected himself. If money is a problem under the saber, I'll take you for cheap. We're all in the same resort world here. We must help the land. Anna gave the man the address of her house, where they lived with her mother and stepfather. She decided to see what was going on there first. She was shocked by what she saw. A brand new hotel stood in the place of their home. There was no sign of the Negra's property either. Our Charlotte is growing, building on building and building on building, boasted the cab driver. My wife and I moved to the village of Piatahaki to New York only 10 kilometers away. We successfully sold our land here at the resort. Now we have real houses there, with a large plot of land for a garden. You know, the locals don't often go to the sea. When you want to take a dip, I have a car, and I'll help you knock down an octogenarian. And where can you rent an apartment in the city? Asked Anna. I'll take you there. Now we'll find you a shelter. On the unspoken real estate market, where they soon found themselves with a cab driver, the girl surprisingly without delays, found the vacant apartment in the neighborhood, Visa Key Barrick. She gave the intermediary grandmother an advance payment for three months in advance, took the keys and thanked the man for his help. Let me take you to the point. The places there are great. The sea is like in the palm of your hand from the windows. New buildings, well-maintained around with playgrounds, even open-air swimming pools, sometimes in the courtyards. Near a small wasteland in a picturesque neighborhood Anna and the cab driver wanted to park, he even offered to write down his cell phone number. You'll need me. I'm always around. And then it dawned on her that she didn't have a cell phone yet. It's not a good idea to be out of touch in the modern world. A hospital countryman helped her, and with this misfortune in half an hour she had a brand new phone in her hands. It remained only to master the unknown for her technique, yes to enter the numbers from a piece of paper, brought Anna from the colony. Convict Anna did not make friends with anyone in the colony. Comrades in the dormitory, blessed not of this world, she was considered for a morbid love of book novels. But the fascination of the family still played an important role for her in establishing normal contacts with her neighbor. That day a new girl joined their squad. Five was brought under the 124th article, which penalizes inappropriate medical care, resulting in death. The young woman worked as a surgeon after medical school. She had a bold, somewhat arrogant character, which in her profession was more of a hindrance than a favorable factor. She was on duty in the emergency room of surgery, where emergency patients from all over the city are brought by ambulance and examined a girl with typical signs of acute appendicitis. The patient was brought straight from the airport. I hurried to send her to the operating table to avoid peritonitis. Anna had little understanding of the intricacies of all this. Maybe what she didn't realize from the story when the doctors discovered the breach on the patient. Everyone just gasped. Pretty creature. Turned out to be a transporter. She was carrying around some powder packets inside her, one of which burst and burned everything inside, causing a hell of a lot of cramping. The lab later found out the notorious potion was an experimental novelty. It was highly toxic. The young peddler had no chance of survival, but such a resin was not to her liking. Her father was a powerful businessman from the capital. He personally traveled to the province to look into it. Paid to make the cause of death look different on the paperwork. Tried to get rid of the witnesses in white coats, and Sabrina called the surgeon guilty. That's how she ended up in the bed next to Anna, sobbing, hysterical. Couldn't believe this was happening to her. She doesn't remember the trial very well. Arrested right in the courtroom. Staged from D.C., they salted Obi from the Black Sea coast. Treated her book lover with stories of how Sabrina would get out, meet her love, become happy, get back into the profession. The latter was controversial, but Anna presented everything so beautifully, so mesmerizing that other female prisoners began to gather around their romantic circle. They wrote a fairy tale about me. They asked the new author, You're blessed. What if God hears these mantras and prayers of yours? And prosperity for us. Evening sit-ins have become a system. When one of the convicts had a bad time at home and they found out about it, they went straight to Anna with a request to calm my happiness. 
They generously shared the parcels with the writers. Anna had nothing to give them but intrigues. She'd only enveloped everyone who wished it, with a tale of the future, a life of being at large. All hoped, all believed. Everyone waited for it to be as the redhead had told them it would be. Tomorrow Anna will go to register with the authorities. At the same time we'll find out how it happened that in the place where she used to be registered, registered. Now the hotel is welcoming guests. It seems there are lines in the law that she has the right to return from the zone to the place where she once lived. Massive new building, where it was not possible to rent a one-room apartment with furnishings, was quite high dense seas. It seems that the builders did not begin to uproot these thickets, the hand did not rise to ruin the colorful flowers and juicy emerald leaves. Now however, by the fall all this beauty has somewhat faded, but the remnants of luxurious flora still look charming. It was about a hundred meters to the entrance. When the girl heard sobbing in the bushes, the idea of looking for further adventures warned her inner voice. Her feet were already carrying her to the incomprehensible sounds. What she saw when she pulled apart the frescoes of the 10-meter high plant shocked her. On the ground lay a young man agonizing on his stomach, a knife sticking out of his back, around which there was a bloody stain on his light-colored jacket. At first it was unclear whether the man was conscious or unconscious. Just don't touch the handle. You just got parole. This incident will be pinned on you. Anna's mind was racing. Go to your new apartment, drop your stuff, think about the situation and come back. If you decide to do that, don't call the police, then you're dead. I gave myself mental instructions and followed them like a robot. I left my backpack in the hallway, memorized a list of phone numbers, and found Sabrina's number to try my luck. Maybe her girlfriend, who had gotten out of the zone six months ago, would answer and give her a clue. In a metallic voice the phone gave out the caller is temporarily off the network, but you can leave a message. Sabrina, it's blessed. Anna mentally smiled. Gotta start weaning myself off the zone habits. Calling names by nicknames. I'm out on parole and back in New York today. Call me when you can, bringing your cell phone with you. The girl rushed back to the man in the bushes. He was lying in the same position. Eyes open, but it looked like he was in some bad shape. How come no one had discovered him here yet? Anna asked herself questions that had no answers. This place needs a doctor. What good am I? I don't even know if I can get the knife out of his body. As if an answer took her doubts, the man raised brown eyes with thick and dark latches at her. Seeing the red-headed wonder above him, he was dumbfounded. But then, gathering all his last strength, whispered into his pocket for his phone. Find a contact, Max. Call. He lost consciousness again. The girl began fumbling through all of his pockets. How has the world changed? She pondered. It used to be noisy, crowded, fun in the courtyards of any high rise in New York City. I've been here for 10 minutes. In that time, no one has even passed by. The playground with the slides is empty, almost silently a car parked at the far entrance. Once again, there's no one around, though maybe that's for the best. After a painstaking search, the device was found in the back pocket of her jeans. Anna barely pulled it out of there, trying not to cause the man any unnecessary pain. Max found the phone of the unknown at once. The answer came instantly. Harvey, so where did you disappear to? You've never disappeared from the radar screen for so long before. It's not Harvey, Anna replied deeply. She was somehow pricked by the stranger's anxious tone. I'm so worried about my relative. Who are you and what is your connection to the man I found in the bushes outside my house? She asked. What bushes? Interrupted her interlocutor. Did you get mine drunk or something? And now with your charms you scowl at the dumb ones, but you give them a head start, said the girl sharply. Do you even know how to listen to other people? I found your brother in the bushes with a live wound in his back. It's the first time I've seen him in my life, but I'm not used to abandoning those in distress, she said without missing a beat, whereupon Max spoke aloud. You dictate the address and I'll be right there. I don't know the exact address. I just got out of the zone yesterday. Today, I find myself here. Anna said angrily. I rented an apartment in my native New York, in a neighborhood, I think. It's called the High Shore. It's getting worse by the hour. I hope you didn't sew him up there in a fit of passion, smiled her interlocutor. Anna did not accept his jokes and replied, you guessed it, tick tack tack. I was just on the hundredth article. But it wasn't me who mailed your kin. Max immediately slowed down and asked, Well, what happened to Harvey? What happened to him with the lady sitting next to him? 
It seemed like it was time to go, to find out, to set things straight. Asking the stranger to go read the exact address and house number, he jumped into his jeep and rushed to the scene of the tragedy. Max expected anything, but in no way expected that such a pretty Anna would come out of the bushes to meet him. Even in her modest, ragged attire, she looked like a lovely specimen of feminine beauty. She didn't look like a criminal in the slightest. The man was confused, which was completely out of character for him. With flashing green eyes, Anna led him to her brother, and then her cell phone came to life in her pocket. It was Sabrina. Anna, honey, you're out, she shouted into the receiver. Oh, I'm so glad, you blessed friend of mine. How much did you do for me in the zone? My good one. If it weren't for your support, I would have broken down, died, surrendered to the will of fate. Max listened with interest to the disorderly excited monologue. It's not so simple with this convict as it goes. But Harvey must be helped now. At this time, in a nutshell, Anna, without lurking in the least, outlined the situation to Sabrina. The latter responded without question. You don't have to shine. It's just over 80 kilometers from you. I'm in a car. I'll be there in two hours. Move the guy to a safe place so as not to touch the knife in his back. When I get there, I'll do it all myself. Anna turned to Max and meant it. Okay, so my friend is the molder. A doctor by profession, she's a surgeon, according to you, but she's been suspended from practicing medicine. I don't think she's lost her skills. And you go ahead, cuh. Pick up your brother carefully and carry him to my apartment. I've got the first floor. We can handle it. The girl stepped toward the exit of the bushes to see if their path was clear of witnesses. Check the cameras. Max whispered in her back. Residential neighborhoods like this are packed with them nowadays. I don't know under what circumstances Harvey got into this trouble. Harvey's transportation was done perfectly. He wasn't even conscious. At Anna's apartment, they put him on the couch. Still on his stomach as well, tentatively covered with the surface beneath him, clay taken off the kitchen table. I haven't spent more than 10 minutes here. Haven't gotten the hang of it myself yet, the girl explained her unfamiliarity with the area. I'm going to go plug in the refrigerator. See if there's a kettle and some utensils in the kitchen. Might need some boiling water. And you blow to the drugstore. Get some bandages. Broad spectrum antibiotics, iodine, celine, hydrogen peroxide, painkillers. That's for a discount. I don't know what else might be needed. After a moment's thought, she added in a hostess way. Also go to the supermarket, you'll need a food supply and drinking water. Give me your phone number, I'll put it on the list. I don't want to go through your brother's phone anymore. I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not a caregiver for you or your brother. Max eagerly rushed to run errands. Anna, powerless, sank into the chair and stealthily began to stare at the man lying on the couch. Both brothers were handsome. One could sense at once that they were both endowed with charm, even though one of them was now lying on her rented apartment like a motionless puppeteer of an involuntarily throbbing body. Alima had carried them to the colonies. When cars with carts were sent to unload bakeries, they had their own on the territory. But they never became real bakers. The flower wouldn't listen. It stuck to her hands and tried to take on an ugly shape as she molded powerful products. God, when will she finally stop living her life in the zone? Every moment of time paralleled her dreams. How would she find out? A couple of outwardly masculine strangers of athletic build caught her eye. The eyes of the second one were like two brown lightning bolts. Anna in the morning and did not imagine that a man can attract her, and even more to awaken the female essence inside to make something hitherto unknown to feel. Who to tell about the fact that she had never had physical intimacy with a member of the opposite sex? No one would believe it. She didn't have time. It didn't work out. After the incident with her stepfather for a long time with a shudder, she was disgusted just by the thought of this side of the relationship between the two opposite sexes. After a couple of years of imprisonment began to throw her signs of attention one of the convoyers. Mostly there were female guards, and here they sent a young soldier to help her on duty, and she was 20 at that time. Yes, and he was still young and obviously inexperienced. One day when he was on duty, there was an engagement party in the colony. He went to the shower room to see her. The story with the stepfather didn't repeat itself. The kid had just gotten to the door when she couldn't keep up with the others. He hesitated and the sight of him made her angry. There was something unprecedented in her eyes. Fearful, dangerous, wild. The guard, 
without saying a word, retreated, and then he turned his male attention to a young girl with no special complexes. The girl said that they even got along for a long time. At night quiet mounts and outside, and on his watch the girl from the cell disappeared until morning. Then, when the time was up, he meet her from the zone. And how did it end? No one was interested afterwards. Here it would be with their lovers on the outside, unattended left men each correctly dispose of. There's a phone on the table. It was Sabrina. A little confused in New York, out of habit, dealing with the address, Anna told Harvey on the couch. He was still unconscious, intermittent moaning and panting. Finally, the doorbell rang at the apartment, Sabrina and Max piling in almost simultaneously. After sending him to the kitchen to sort through food and medicine, both women returned to the injured man. You be the backup, ordered the momentarily assembled doctor. Help me turn him a little. That's good now, and turn on all the lights in the room. Watching the quick dexterous movements of the former surgeon was a real pleasure. For former doctors who had taken the Hippocratic Oath, Sabrina pulled out the knife, reporting that the penetration was not deep at all. No vital organs were hit, but there's a lot of blood loss, which is not good. After all the manipulations, she defended the patient, who immediately started muttering something. Well done. You bought everything right, she praised Anna and Max. Now I'll inject your victim with antibiotics and painkillers. He should come to his senses soon. To the doctor widened the precious ones, you my precious ones, the wound could have been more serious. First, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this case. My brother and crime are on different paths. They're very far apart. I'm the one who gets hint on occasionally for business. He's kind of a quiet drunk. He doesn't even go out with the ladies. He's always at his computer. Our parents are old medical professionals, so they decided not to bother them. Thank you very much, Sabrina. I won't rust. Now my brother's awake. I'll take him home with me. Don't even think about it. Sabrina was immediately outraged. It'll take two or three days to transport him. We don't know how the wound will behave. So what am I supposed to do now? Ask you for a permanent position. Smiled, as always imperturbable Max. I don't even know your name yet. Anna, without extra curtsies, answered the girl. And you and your brother Max and Harvey? I'm the one with the drawing. I found the document. Sabrina, I trust her. Like I trust myself. We've had too much going on today. Half an hour later, the whole group, except Harvey, was drinking coffee because of Anna's stocking up in the kitchen. Max hadn't thought to buy anything to make hot drinks. The sausage and cheese that Max had brought were in use. The sandwiches with them all seemed divinely delicious. Oh, I have some gingerbread, Anna remembered, and there were about 200 grams of cognac left in the bottle. The guys added cognac to their coffee and discussed the day's adventures with gingerbread which turned out to be a real pastry masterpiece. At night, everyone decided to stay in the apartment. So while the stores were open, Max went to buy bed linen, towels, shampoos, toothpastes, and soap. He couldn't resist. He went to a specialty store and bought elite coffee, turku, sugar, chocolates, cookies. We should treat the girls to a little something sweet, considering where they both spent more than one year. All the fates of women, how different they can be. Anna briefly told him who and why she got nailed. And for some reason, he believed her unconditionally. Sabrina had split too. How she was deprived of her favorite profession. Now she's a checkout girl at the supermarket. At least she got a job there. When Max came back, he was dozing on the chair by the bedside. Anna was in the kitchen trying to boil broth from chicken thighs. Max was going to go to the kitchen too, so as not to make noise in the room. But then Harvey opened his eyes looked around the surprisingly unfamiliar room, squinted his hand at the bandage on his chest. Where am I? Don't worry, I'm right here, Max reassured him. You're a fool. What kind of story did you get into? That's the most screws you've ever thrown at me. To clean up the aftermath of you and Katie running away from a nightclub three days ago. Why'd you pick up Bakmatova? I took her back to my place. There were no other chicks around. That night a day ago, Harvey was at the monitor as usual. The day before, he'd spent a long time with his brother. Max had just finalized another promising deal and had come to Harvey's house to celebrate the success of his business endeavor. He brought with him a whole basket of delicacies, a couple of cases of excellent beer. Harvey's bachelor pad was just out of clear supplies. I couldn't get a delivery. And then Mother Teresa showed up, as always with a kind grumbling and gifts, sorting out munchies my electronic grief. 
When will you get yourself a girlfriend to cook borscht and bake pies? As if you need yours for borscht. Adnikivu Harvey, already willing without any heat treatment at smoke wieners and grunt of Murmansk pleasure females use for some malice. Here it is not necessary to observe the laws of brotherly seniority. Half an hour later, the outstanding potatoes were already frying on the frying pan. On the kitchen table, there was a dish with salome from fish and seafood, and Max was masterfully cutting salad from fresh cucumbers and tomatoes. Both hitchhiked beers and shared news. At Harvey's the case was coming to an end, new computer program still little tried out. This time he was drawn to medicine. The finished product was to be of interest to pharmaceutical companies for identifying drugs. The man had already been working on this project for several months, following a tip from a virtual colleague from Germany. The one took on another part of the turnover of drugs and therapeutic agents, promising Harvey that together they would sell their brainchild to interested people in the West for good money. Max did not see such bright prospects from the overhaul of one old hotel in New York. The resort complex was too visibly outdated, but it had that classic thoroughness, which had recently become more and more fashionable. The customer wanted to get something in the style of romantic baroque, with all these domes colonnade, an abundance of details, bright colors of the facade. N.A.K.S. at first grabbed his head, and then suddenly realized that he and his guys themselves were busy to deal with such a task. So in the professional sphere both brothers were not bored. In the afternoon Max and his new partner, the customer, signed a contract for a tidy sum. Harvey also seemed to see the light at the end of the tunnel. They laughed. Hey bro, maybe we can go on vacation later. The sea and its delights are just around the corner. But I'd like to see some oceans overseas. Maldives is a bit expensive, but Thailand or Vietnam with their tropical paradise is the best. Max, who was already tipsy, was humming. Aha! We'll book a separate bungalow, so that right on the shore with aquamarine and warm water yellow, velvet sand sea creatures to dive. They would have continued dreaming. But then there was a call on Harvey's cell phone from a German comrade. It turned out that he also spent the whole day at the negotiations, where he announced not only his program and his partner's developments. An excited Kurt shouted into the receiver. Please hurry up. He spoke even louder. I've been writing to you and you're not answering. Harvey rushed to whoever was in his email account, and there were three messages from Kurt with attachments. He'd have to sit up at night now to sort it all out in detail. He went to Max in the kitchen and explained the situation. It's okay, his brother replied, I'll stay the night at your place. I'll put on my headphones. I'll watch a movie and drink some beer. When Harvey was immersed in his favorite world of programming, he stopped noticing anything around him. In the morning, he saw that his brother so diligently absorbed beer that he got soiled in it and in the fish, like a piglet, smiling at the underdog, who did not even move through things into the washing machine to tidy up. And Max put a clean set of clothes on the chair next to the sofa. In the decayed guest entered a phase of vigor after three hours, made himself some coffee, washed the dishes. After their drinking, he carefully covered Harvey lying on the air mattress with a warm plate and was gone. Work would not wait. The chain of coincidences began to gain momentum and acquire new links. In the evening of the next day Harvey found that to the remnants of tasty gifts brought yesterday by Max, catastrophically lacking bread, fish without cereals and potatoes, he did not recognize. It was not desirable to search long for outer clothes for himself. So he pulled from the rope in the bathroom light windbreaker Max, on the street in autumn was not so warm and cozy as in the Black Sea summer. In the nearest store from among the products of 24 hours to his annoyance bakery products were not observed. All dismantled people hurrying home under the cozy barrel of the TV. I'll go to the neighboring microdistrict Vysoki Barrack. There they have recently opened a supermarket. I'll buy coffee and sweets at the same time, the man decided and quickened his step. He had to walk for at least 20 minutes. In the vicinity of the new buildings not all the infrastructure has not yet been set up at the entrance to the store, Notice the company of the local major shaggy golden boy. So nicknamed for his luxurious hair with an African accent, blonde hair. Sticking unruly in all directions like springs. Next to him, grinning at his loyal friends, two big foreheads were whispering hotly in the ear of their kingpin. He took a step forward. Max, have you completely lost your way? Don't you know that Katie is my girlfriend, that we have a serious relationship, said the shaggy man, but his smile looked evil and his voice sounded mocking. Harvey had heard about KT leaving the hangout with Max a couple days before this evening. The man had told him about it yesterday. 
as well as the fact that he didn't drag the girl against her will under the drink, she herself hung on him all the time and threw inviting glances. Max never liked that kind of girl. He wasn't going to drag her into bed. But already on the street Katie suddenly came out from the corner of the club and whispered pitifully, Take me away, Max, from here. I hate that brazen face of his buddies. I don't know why the shaggy one thought he owned me. I slept with him once, and now he won't let me go to any party without him claiming me. Max had always had an easygoing nature, and now he was relieved that KB didn't have any plans for him tonight. He took the girl by the waist and led her to his car. He'd been out of work at the club and hadn't missed a drink. The girl lived far away, a satellite town in New York, but that didn't bother him. They chatted for a while on the way, and then Kathy dozed off. She only apologized for hitting on Max for appearances, so that the shaggy one at the house quickly slipped out of the car, a grateful peck on Max's cheek. If Shaggy asks what's going on with you and me, please tell him we're together. You're a well-known person in our neighborhood. Maybe that leftist asshole and his gang will finally leave me alone. Remembering what Max had told him yesterday about Katie's request, Harvey decided to play along with his brother. Forget about Katie. She's with me now, he replied shaggy-haired and disappeared through the door of the store. Are you gonna regret this, asshole? He was followed by the angry hiss of the curly-haired beauty. Having bought all the necessary things, Max decided to shorten the road and walk to his house by the yards, past the already built houses and work in full swing. Even in the dark time of construction, there were not that many lanterns around, but he was never afraid. He had already forgotten about the incident at the store. He was thinking in his head how he could further improve the project he and Kurt were working on. He didn't hear the footsteps behind him right away. So a slight suspicious rustle decided that the cats had become active by night snooping through the bushes near the beautiful cities. I stopped to smell the almost bright pink flower. What happened next? He could no longer see. A shadow flickered behind him, he was hit in the head with something heavy. Losing consciousness, he felt a prick in his back, similar to the manipulations of a nurse giving inoculations. A split second later, he blacked out. He came to himself twice, but he couldn't figure out where he was or what had happened to him. He seemed to be dreaming, even pleasant dreams. He'd and Max on the islands, in the lonely villa, just above the ocean. He'd seen something like this in a commercial about traveling to the other side of the world, where coconuts and palm trees grow and downy chocolate bars are made. The vision was a bright red blur, flashed above him, as it seemed to him, right on the wooden stretcher leading to his and Max's cabin over the smooth sea. Then he vaguely felt himself being gently dragged somewhere, in an awkward downward position, belly down. More sharp pain, the gray eyes of some woman in a white robe. More pain. Another failure. He woke up to the fact that there was not a single calm cell left in his body. It hurt everywhere at once. For a second he heard his brother's voice in the distance, or was he imagining it again? Harvey opened his eyelids with great difficulty. Where? The men looked exactly alike. One was quick, smiling, always hanging around her. Max II was now in her room in Sabrina's capable hands. Harvey the woman gave him a dressing down, getting ready to leave for home. She had to leave for work in Houston early in the morning. Something incomprehensible, hitherto unknown, and therefore frightening, was going on in the girl's mind. It can't be, because it can never be with me. She said to herself like a prayer, but she was irresistibly attracted physically to two male representatives at once. She had not known before that such an ordinary, natural, feminine desire for carnal love at such a wrong, inappropriate moment and her hands are trembling. And Max kept his eyes on her, as if some currents from her were reaching his gut. Nonsense, absurd, more like shock, a fog, an obsession. It doesn't have to be like this. It is. Shove your misunderstandings to the back of your mind. Haven't you had enough adventures with men in your life? These feelings are stronger than her. It's not inappropriate for her to bring up a Jack London novel. The Little Mistress of the Big House. His heroine, I think her name was Paula, couldn't choose between two men and said goodbye to life. And yes, you're losing your mind. My star again brings you back to reality, Anna. None of them are even going to notice you. Take advantage of the circumstances offered, it'll be over, and they'll disappear from your life. You're a criminal. An ex-con with a stigma on your record. They're both so cute. Why would they want a treasure like you? Like a somnambulist, the girl is escorted to the door. Sabrina half-heartedly listens to the fact that their doctor informs them that he won't be in until the day after tomorrow. 
when the shift changes they have a supermarket, open 24 hours a day. There is a long shift ahead. From the kitchen there is a joyful exclamation Max Anna, look what I found, a cup with a spout from such dishes on the waters drink mineral water. Now I'll pour broth into it, I'll feed it to Lipka. In the meantime, fill the rest of the chicken broth with something. There's potatoes, there's vervicelli, I'm hungry, so I'm exhausted. The girl obediently goes to the kitchen, cooks soup thoughts of the two men who suddenly appeared in her life, briefly let her out. The soup, made quickly, turns out to be delicious and nourishing. And Max sincerely thanks the skillfully. Fed Harvey, Fed Max falls into a graceful slumber again. I have to work in the morning again tomorrow. What are your plans? Anna, you're gonna look after your brother while I'm gone. As soon as he wakes up, we'll eat right away. I realize you don't have time for us. I've got my own problems. I have to register with the police with my parole. Discipline first. Then I'll go to the store for supplies and wait for you here. They go to bed in a peculiar way. Max gives the girl more trump seats on the chair, and he settles on the floor at her feet. In the darkness, Anna sees the man's eyes glitter in the sparse fields of their cars, their headlights occasionally passing through the yard below the windows. Both are silent, thinking of their own. If someone had told me that a red-haired witch with green eyes would persistently settle in my head, I would have made that person laugh. Max thinks in silence. He's always had a disdain for pink snot twirling. In his opinion, there are some overly romantic types around love affairs. And now here we are, while we were having dinner. Suddenly he imagined Anna making him soup. Not here, but in his apartment. There's a bunch of kids running around screaming mommy daddy. We're going to the amusement park on Saturday. And he Max, the head of the family steadily answers to ride on the swings, and Gorky will go to the one who will do his homework today the best. That's what a happy carefree family looks like. Only troubles from these women frown. Good men lose their heads. But this girl is completely different. No eye contact. Jeans, sweatshirt, sweatshirt and making her figure without uniform, took off only at night, when she lay down under the blanket and pulled it almost to her nose. He did not listen very carefully to her story about the prison term, remembered the main stepfather molested she accidentally nailed him. Inexperienced, naive, not spoiled. There's not much to be surprised about. Life has a way of throwing up surprises and twists of fate. It's not a pretty story with Katie. He will deal with this handsome curly-haired man separately, as well as with his friends. They'll be shocked they stabbed Harvey in a hurry to intimidate him, not him without the police. He's pulling major wings. He's got a man in mind. The one Max crew made a nice house out of. He's got a beef with Shaggy, for hurting him too. Max tried to think about anything, it was useless, in front of his eyes stood Anna at the moment when she appeared, in front of him from the bushes appeared. What's happening to him? He's in love. Nonsense. He can't wait for all of them to make his heart on the altar of feelings. He's got one. He's got feelings for Harvey and his parents. A woman has no place in it, but his nature is masculine and refused to resist. The miracle that had happened didn't care who or Sabrina, what was wrong with her or how. It was his time to become half of something whole. What are the songs they sing about? Legends are made. Rolled on the floor, almost sleepless. Easily got up, went to brew coffee in a brand new turbo for himself, and the girl hugged and now a pillow in the chair. No sleeping conditions whatsoever. She smelled sweetness in herself. Woke up the girl soon and red-haired Sonia woke up. It's time for you to go to the police. I've boiled eggs, made butter sandwiches, eat and go. Thanks, Max. It's been a long time since anybody's met me for breakfast in this life. It's been years since I've been with a couple like that. The former sleepyhead is all pink. After a shower, Anna enthusiastically ate the prepared breakfast, thanked the knight for the service and rushed into town. She came back quickly bloomy, explained her bewilderment about the House of Residence registration. I don't know who my mother strained, but I was discharged to nowhere when the house was sold. She herself got married again and left with her husband somewhere in the north. The trail goes on and on. Forget it. Max told her. Everyone's deeds boomerang back on them. And you, on the contrary, wish your parents good health and happiness. Let her go with God. Anna took the market purchases to the kitchen. Disappeared behind the bathroom door, previously made from a hook in the closet. A warm terrorcloth robe festered her, asked Max to put the kettle on or make coffee. For a long time she scrubbed her face under the line in hot water, 
the dirt of family betrayal was destroyed, then appeared in the kitchen. The man embraced Anna in a gesture of support and comfort. She smelled of herbs, retained the remnants of fragrance, shampoo, or shower gel, but in his arms did not immediately deceive like other young ladies. Everything pulled like a string. Get your hands off me or I won't vouch for myself. Max immediately sent with difficulty equalizing his breathing, and Sabrina was working magic on him. His eyes darkened with desire. His hand was barely thinking straight. He tried again tearing forward again to catch up with the girl hiding in his kitchen. She was standing in the middle of the room with a knife in her hands. Are you crazy? I'm not going to do anything against your will. I like you so much I'm losing control. You've been courting from the wrong place. Sit down. Don't bring up my dark demon bomb. I just checked in today. I'm about to start a new life. What have I done to you that you want to put me away? You want to put me away for another relapse? The man abruptly turned 180 degrees, grabbed a jacket from the rack in the hallway, slammed the door, ran off to work. Anna burst into tears in the kitchen so as not to wake Harvey. Again the disappointment, again she was wrong about the man she had begun to sympathize with. No, no, he'd let her go right away. But again it was nasty, again it was nasty. Something forever burned in her heart and soul about Max. It's ridiculous for a grown woman to play with a man's interest. Perhaps, but she was again covered with an icy shell of mistrust, ready to hide in the shell of such a strong fruit as a coconut, so that they would not find it, not to forge spoils into the light of God. She looks like there's nothing she can do about it. She'll be looking for a job in an all-female group. She'll go to the hotel to clean and scrub for the season. He will go around the city and ask people if any guest house owners will respond. From acquaintances now only, close old connections are not to rake up not used in business. Max has been going on and on all day. Fool. What kind of a fool would he be to scare her away? The only female creature I've ever felt real warm feelings for. Unexpected, quick, but he was sure it would be the only one in his destiny. At work, he answered inappropriately to the subordinates. At the base, he bought the wrong building materials. He had to make a return, explain himself to the sellers, argue, prove. I was afraid to go to Anna's apartment in the evening, to look her in the eyes intuitively felt that he lost her once and for all, disgusted by such a small thing for him. How many skirts around him he passed through himself in passing, without thinking, changing like gloves. And now he found himself in the position of a beggar himself. Sabrina greeted him, nonchalantly escorted him to Harvey, who for the first time in the last two days was sitting on the couch instead of lying down. The girl did not stir him a whole bowl of cottage cheese with sour cream and honey, and he wolfed it down with evident pleasure. It's on the mend. We Orlos are strong people. Max thought to himself with satisfaction. We must get out of here quickly. How does His Majesty Count Orlov, the eldest, feel? When will the order to leave his palace be given? Harvey's answer was a sudden recovery. We've already discussed the subject with Anna. Sabrina will come tomorrow to examine me. We'll see about authorization. That's how I'll move in. And you, Nax, don't suffer. I'll sleep on the floor. The landlady's doing a fine job with me on her own. That's what Max was thinking. Yeah, they're already working together behind my back. They're friends with each other. And then he felt ashamed. He remembered how Harvey, without thinking, had responded to his name with the shady company. How he had accepted his version of events from Katie without reservation, and how he had not given out a word of reproach to Max. He could easily have reminded him of his tendency to constant promiscuity with the opposite sex. In his head, out of nowhere, came the words of the song, Bound together by the same chain. Bound together by one purpose. I've got no one closer to me, Max told himself. And the rat of jealousy, I'll drive out of my heart. Anna fiddled in the kitchen and did it with obvious pleasure-smelling pies, borscht, with a dill badge homemade cutlets. Max was drooling from such luxury. Soon we'll have dinner. Anna peeked out of the kitchen. Imagine, guys, I miss so much the usual woman's business that I stopped by the market after the police and picked up everything. I've been practicing. What a blessing to have a house and voices in it. Anna, what kind of a house is it? It's an illusion. And the voices in it are alien. But it was so enchanting that she thought that, even if it was just for a few days, I had an ephemeral semblance of a family. Ghostly, not real, artificially created by a stalemate and still marvelous. She no longer reacted to Max, nor did the attraction. Came at an unfortunate time and left under the pressure of circumstance. She looked at Harvey as if he were her own mother. 
wanted to feed him, pity him. Not made for love, for relationships, for a unit of society. So there was nothing to open your mouth and dream of one tiny childish experiment on Max's part was enough to realize I came to this world for something else. I'll never survive me or the pretender to my body. Max admired the girl sadly. Harvey was surprised to realize that he hadn't remembered his programs for two days. His cell phone was lost somewhere in the bushes. He just realized that now. Kurt must have cut all the invisible wires. Max and Anna volunteered to look for Harvey's cell phone. They searched the grass for a long time, but they cut off the cheap device like a cow with their tongues. In general, all the searches were useless and Max went to Harvey's apartment to bring his laptop and buy a new smartphone. A little tired, Harvey volunteered to do the dishes after dinner, but what the hell? He wasn't strong enough, so he was escorted back to the couch. The man lay down thinking. There was something in the air, some vibe in the apartment, but he could not identify what was really going on. Max tense, and they all like the taut strings of a fragile violin. There are feelings brewing between them. But then why does Harvey himself turn inside out at the thought? He began to go through beads of memories of the night he'd been attacked. The most vivid seemed to be the moment when he came to his senses for a moment and saw a red cloud with two green dots leaning toward his face. There seemed to be no such thing as red-headed angels. But it seemed to him now that he had met just him, the guardian of his life, not afraid to get involved in the consequences of other people's strife. And the fact that he is now lying in the apartment of this brave girl, on her sofa enjoying pies and cutlets, in her kitchen, eating tasty chi, cottage cheese from her hands, this is a new miracle. Harvey's musings were interrupted by Max returning from his computer. But Harvey reacted sluggishly to his iron friend. Without active interest wrote only that he was sick, he would return to the program a little later, and immediately closed the lid of the laptop. A little caught in the hallway brother quickly slipped away in the evening twilight. He and Anna were alone in the apartment, and Harvey asked her quietly, Tell me your story. All from the beginning in detail, I have heard only fragments to think and fantasize is not mine. I want to hear everything from you. Anna looked at the man, and then she burst into tears. Quite serene in her childhood, her father's flight to the north, to earn money, her mother's floundering in search of a Harvey friend, and the appearance in their home stepfather, who managed to gifts and affectionate speeches, to put to sleep the vigilance of a young pretty schoolgirl. About Vegas and Chicago, about dreams of becoming an author of women's novels. About that dreadful day when she ran to share with her family the news of her college admission. About the fight with her stepfather, who had hitherto concealed his plans for the colony. At first, she wanted to narrate sparingly, but then she survived for the memory of the stories of the dormitory and those novels that she invented for them to get out of homesickness. About her acquaintance with the surgeon Sabrina and her difficult fate about the convoy and how she almost made trouble again then, Harvey was a magical listener. It began to seem to Anna that her life was not the worst thing that could happen under this earthly sky. She now told with a laugh about her mission to rescue a glorious young man in Denver, about the unique taste of smoked sausage on the train and the sweetness of Ozyanikov's cookies eaten with strong coffee. The man was shocked at her frankness and trust in him, at her loneliness on this planet, at her boldness pushed the girl toward him into the bushes. In response to the strange sounds he wanted to say something very nice and the words froze on his lips. Then he just stroked her hand softly, gently, affectionately, and she did not push it away. And her own hand, clasped in his fingers, could not stand it. They sat like that for almost an hour, holding hands. They talked until almost morning. They brewed coffee twice, but they did not want to interrupt the dialogue under any pretext. Anna had the feeling that she had been to confession. At the kind monk relieved her soul, without embarrassment and without thinking how it all looks from the outside. Harvey was drowning in tenderness. This girl struck him to the heart of a criminal with a pure heart. A fragile flower unbroken in the crucible of adversity. He had a strange feeling for her. He wanted to become for her all at once an umbrella from the sun and rains, a canopy from the rockfall wall from trouble, and yet a strong burning desire to take advantage of her beauty, he did not feel, even smiled to himself. A prince or a knight for your lady, Mr. Musketeer. This princess is attracted to all sorts of things, you will not notice. He did not leave the feeling that fate had confronted him with a certain test, from which he must come out with honor. Like some hero of the love stories Anna was so fond of, a knight without fear and reproach knowing himself at the feet of the charm of nice and the whole world and demanding nothing in return. 
The next day, as promised, Sabrina arrived. The examination of the patient pleased her immensely. That's what means a young body a couple of weeks, and you can sign up in the queue of applicants for the honorary position of astronaut. She approved Harvey's move to his own apartment without any hesitation. That same evening Max picked him up, and they left Anna's dwelling. The girl could again enjoy her own freedom, but she was sad. In order not to finally surrender to despondency, she persistently searched for at least some workplace. God not Timothy sees a little. Vacancy found neatly in that hotel, which was built on the site of the parental house. Isn't that a sign of good luck? The manager of the hotel complex calmly accepted the news that Anna had served her time. A little only questioned who the girl wiped off the face of the earth and for what? Understandably hummed at this strong-willed elderly Armenian once served time. Her eldest son, her daughter went to the capital, and there another scumbag scowled at her and threw her out on the street with a belly higher than her nose. Frederick didn't ask her to marry. The son found her under guard, shot her once. The sharp-eyed boy hit the heart on the first try. Of course he was tried. Sure, he served 12 years in a maximum security penal colony on parole. Then he got out, for good behavior. A young mom survived. Soon married a widower with two children, lives happily. Only about her brother defender long grieved. Anna started to work with enthusiasm and responsibility. She came home late, but now she could afford the rent of the apartment, with which she had so much to do without stress. A couple of times she was caught up at home Max called her to a restaurant to have dinner or ask for a visit. She wouldn't go and wouldn't let him in the house. Though she saw that the man realized everything and would not pester again, my heart was silent for crying out loud, and Harvey remembered with warmth was grateful to him for that night of revelations. From Max learned that her brother is all type top with health, all immersed in the completion of the project, is going to Germany for the presentation of his program. Went to see Sabrina in Houston over the weekend. Used to visit her at the jam. We'd sit and reminisce with lacquer or pastries. A divine delicious dessert coffee shop had just opened in New York. The women nicknamed it Sweet Brain Detachment. Impossible to resist. Life got better. Life got more fun. Just the words of the heroine of fate from the movie Chicago doesn't believe in tears. For some reason, they kept running through my head. Don't tell anyone that when you achieve everything in life, you want to forget the wolf even more. Max had fundamentally changed his principles, his traditions, his rituals, his way of life. Harvey's offenders were punished severely. Dad was forced to send his son abroad to study. That way he gained some smarts too. The beating up of his buddies, they're being subtly criminalized. They've been on the edge of the knife all the time. They'll be serving time for a long time. They'll have time to think about everything. Baroque chalets. Max and his brigade were so sad for the client that the whole neighborhood went to them like to museums. A package of contracts for the future. And the puffy folders almost all did not fit. The money was flowing rightly into nightclubs and parties. Has cut off, even to himself the man did not want to admit that Rave Dana lived thoughts and dreams of her. She was as adamant as a rock. Moreover, he saw, as soon as he held out his hand to her with a bouquet of flowers, she, driving prickly, turned. She didn't want to show it to him. But her eyes froze ice, her body tensed. Her gait was like that of a statue. He couldn't hurt her again. She realized that unrequited his feelings with her own hands had ruined everything. He'd ruined it for himself. He still remembered the velvet skin of her body, the herbal plume of the scent of her hair, her confusion. The first moment in the icy anger. The second, it didn't work out, it didn't work out. Hopelessness and hopelessness. No one would ever believe that sometimes without her, loved, desired, so dear. He didn't want to go on living. Silent Harvey to his goal to wake up the sleeping beauty, to remove from her shackles a fear of the physical component of the relationship between a man and a woman moved slowly, not on the spur. He realized that he loved Anna not at once. His experience in this area was not great. He didn't care how it would be for him in the future. The main thing was to bring Anna back to a full life, with or without him. But she must become the happiest like the female characters in her sentimental flair. Their joint brainchild, with Kurt went through the presentation in Germany to the hilt. Both developers shone afterwards at the banquet like clean silver coins. Several contracts were signed for the implementation of the common program in reputable pharmaceutical corporations. The next step was to offer the development in the USA. There was a lot to do. He'd only seen Salty a couple times. He didn't ask his sweetheart out in passing. 
until the time he gave her time to come to her senses, finally after the zone for breathing fully to settle in, to get up, independently on their feet. Anna now no longer worked as a cleaner in the hotel, and was preparing to become an animator, to lead in the evening's performances for the tourist public to get the crowd. Turnover she was getting marvelous, languages suspended, fantasy irrepressible. Even for the children's audience was able to come up with such contests and pranks. Adults swoon with delight and interest. In New York was coming into its own exuberant spring, has recovered from the winter chill. Sharp in the yard, played in the lives of three people. Far from the last role in the distance shown aquamarine aquamarine new loved one see. The resort froze in anticipation of a new beach season. Many establishments were going to open their doors hospitably and already by May vacation rub their hands, shashlicks, washed to a shine their stalls and cellars of resort goods. Harvey saw none of this. He was shuttling between New York and Munich and Chicago, explaining something to new colleagues and partners. He was leading seminars and workshops, hanging around the computer as usual, arguing with Kurt, who had recently presented him with a new idea and new drafts of a new program. He hardly even saw Max, it seemed to him that a slight chill ran between them, and still his brother for him remained the second wing of the most native and favorite person his dare, blood, life friend. Harvey was not a knave boy and realized perfectly well that his brother also came to Anna's heart, but talk about her and never, as if a taboo imposed on both on this topic do not get involved then nail the truth. Summer broke out resort village avalanches, dumbfounded them from the delight of vacationers. Filled the beaches became warm sea, not get known to the shores of the nasty female of rotting seaweed in the markets, broke stalls from the local ripe strawberries, scarlet hearts and berries manula. Try us the sweetest ones. Anna ate and ate the juicy fruits and could not get enough of them. Yesterday she got an unexpected call from Max saying that tomorrow night they would come to visit her with Harvey. A good excuse, she didn't know what to think anymore. Max promised a tempting surprise. Asked to prepare his wonderful borscht redhead, pies, cutlets with fried potatoes are also welcome. The redhead himself snapped back at Anna, but she smiled to herself. There was something so promising in Max's voice that she was already burning with curiosity. At exactly 20.00 the doorbell rang, the brothers piled into the apartment at the same time, dismantling their balloons in their bags. Joyfully the girl and Max commanded, We have a house party tonight in honor of our mutual successes. On the table, the common effort sit quickly. Anna was not lazy huge frying pan with cutlets ruddy potatoes, a dish with pies, babies with meat, onions and eggs, cabbage, vegetable salad on the stove under the vapors. Flavor and borscht came first. Max quickly placed on plates, brought with him delicacies. He shoved the cake into the freezer, put a small bucket of strawberries on the shelf, opened the champagne and spoke. Guys, I've been thinking about it for a while, and I've decided to give you a gift for two. Don't be in a hurry to object. I've already looked into it. Anna can use it too. She's behaved impeccably all these months. She's earned a great reputation with the hotel management. I've already gone there to get her references. Harvey and Anna stared at him in total bewilderment until they didn't understand the thing. When we met, you dummies last October, we both answered at the same time. Well, my friends, since that day, life has taken a different course for each of us. If you have noticed it, of course, all of us have achieved notable success in the business field, managed to increase our capitals, even if they are not the same size. Max smiled. I've just bought you the island of Fukuoka in Vietnam. I chose a funny hotel in colonial French style. It's all tropical flora. Pools, beaches, and villas, you'll fall right into the sea. Anna and Harvey were quiet for a while, and then they started talking. What's gotten into your head? What kind of fantasy, Max? If we go like this with the three of us, you know, my precious ones, I'm tied up in October with liability contracts. And you, Harvey, you're taking a break. I've already scouted it out. And Anna's first working season will be over at the hotel, so you should go. The bewildered Harvey was Simon. He realized that just like him, in love with Anna's brother, knowing, or rather, feeling the inner aspirations of Harvey, gives him a fabulous chance to deal with his love for Anna. Silenced on the half word, Anna stopped talking. She scarecrow, really wanted to try and create a relationship with a decent man. Harvey was very sympathetic to her, but she thought that such an option was not a match for her. The disheveled Max tried with his tales of paradisiacal Vietnamese bushes, 
stunning sun mysteries in those lands divinely cook seafood. Break down the wall of their distrust of this adventure, he would have given anything in the world to fly to Fukuoka alone with Anna. But his train had left. He knew that firmly, fenced by the news. Harvey and Anna had finally agreed to try to make the trip. There was still plenty of time ahead of them before the trip. Enough time to get all the business issues resolved and prepare thoroughly. The cork from the champagne bottle flew out with a clinking rattle that condemned the passions at the table a little, bringing everyone back to sinful ground, with Anna and the goodies brought by the guys destroyed with rapture. Everyone was a little embarrassed, but did their best to hide it from the others. When the men were leaving Anna late at night, both brothers kissed her goodbye on the cheek. She didn't pull away, didn't freak out, and even hugged them both lightly in return. One had to get rid of one's nightmares at some point, no matter how scary they were. In the backyard of the house by that bush, Max and Harvey slowed their steps. You're the one who loves her. Max, what are you doing? How are you going to live with yourself? I don't want to live without you. You might not be able to forgive her if she chooses me. I tried to show her some affection, but I wasn't patient. She shut down for good. Don't make the same mistakes I did, buddy. As for you and I being halves of the same pole, it can't go on indefinitely. If you are careful and wise, she will now become your second wing. The two brothers walked away from Anna's house in different directions. Captivated by their love for the same woman, they managed to remain people who knew how to set the right accents in life. Anna froze at the apartment window. What does tomorrow have in store for her? Will she be able to overcome her fears and love Harvey if fate in the person of Max decided to give her such a chance? Only time will answer these questions. She sincerely hopes that ahead of her after all the misfortunes still very much. Different, but so magical and promising. Thank you for watching this video to the end. Subscribe to the channel. Like it, write comments if you like the story. And see you on the channel.